Welcome to the second and final video where I'll show you how to build a Google Dialogflow chatbot and integrate that with Automation Anywhere to trigger an automation. Just as a quick recap, here is the end-to-end -end flow that we're building. So we'll have a bank website which has a widget to trigger our Google Dialogflow chatbot. That much we built in the previous video. I'll now show you how through Google Cloud Functions we can send a command to the Automation Anywhere control room which will trigger some bot logic to run on a computer within our bank's network infrastructure so it can access the internal and external systems. And then our digital worker will be able to involve a human worker in the workflow by triggering a RE request, Automation Anywhere Robotic Interfaces, and we'll see how that can work in our final part of the solution. Now where we left things off in the previous video, we just completed some basic steps for our chatbot here and I'd shown how we can test that over here on the right hand side and generate the JSON data or at least view the JSON data that would be sent across to our cloud function from which we can extract the data to send to our bot. To extract values from the JSON we'll need a little bit of code. Dialogflow doesn't run that code for us, instead we use a different Google service called Cloud Functions. You can enter the Cloud Functions code in Dialogflow, but currently you cannot use Python code, which I think is much easier to work with. I will put a link in the description of this video to my code and you can copy that and it should be easy to modify it to suit your use case. So let's take a look at how to set things up. From the Google Cloud Console, ensure that you have the same project selected that your chatbot was created under. Select Billing from the menu and set up billing for this project. You won't be charged unless your usage goes over a certain limit and the free limits are very generous. Next, search for Cloud Functions and when the service appears, choose to create your first function. Give your function a name and select the region where you'd like it to execute. Leave the authentication as required. Because your chatbot and your function are within the same project, they will have no problem talking to each other. Click Save and Next to move to the next screen and here you should select the latest Python and then delete the sample code that is created. Note that your cloud function involves two files that contain code. These correspond to the two files located at the GitHub link. Ensure you copy the content of both files from GitHub to the correct location as shown here. When you first deploy the cloud function code it might fail and indicate that you need to enable the cloud build API. Go ahead and enable that for your project and then try again. Okay, so our cloud function is now published. Let's go in and edit it and we'll take a quick look at the code itself. One thing you're going to want to do is copy this URL here. This is the URL that gets called in order to trigger the cloud function and we'll need to reference that in Dialogflow. So let's copy that particular point there and we'll quickly review the code. What you'll need to do up the top here in these particular sets of variables is edit this control room URL to be your control room you will need to set the username and password that you're going to be authenticating into that control room with in order to call your bot. We'll later on come and update these values here for the particular bot that's going to be called and the particular run as user or bot runner you want to use. For your use case, you'll want to uh, edit these parameters here. So what's happening in this code is we're requesting the JSON that's being uh, sent and putting it into this variable here. And then from that variable, we're extracting each of the attributes that are being collected by our Dialogflow chatbot. So simply update these here to reference the particular variables you want to extract and to insert them into your particular variable names here. And then in this second part, what we're doing is we're taking this initial JSON document here, which is required to call our bot logic and we're inserting in nodes for each of those variables. So just edit this section here to pull out the particular values and then insert in the particular values you're using. You won't need to worry about the rest of this. This is simply authenticating to the control room and then submitting our JSON to trigger the bot logic. Okay, so let's come back to Dialogflow. So in order to call our new cloud function at the end of this particular intent here, we go into the intent and down the bottom here, click on this here to enable the webhook call for this intent. So you'll need to set that on and then come across to fulfillment and enable the webhook and paste in that URL from your cloud function. And once that is done, the two are integrated. 
Now, I'm not going to go into any details of how we build our bot. What I just want to show is how we would integrate with our bot. Um, if I come across to my control room here and looking at the published version of the bot here, when I open this up, you'll notice that I see the ID of the bot in the URL here. When you go into administration and open up your bot runner, you'll also see the ID number of the bot runner that you want to use in the URL. So just make sure those are referenced here in the top of the XML that you're using here, sorry, the JSON that you're using to call the bot logic. And then make sure that these parameters you're inserting into there match your uh, input parameters in your bot. So here we have the name parameter, which is a string. When I come across here, you'll see I have the name parameter here, which is also a string and which is flagged as input. So that means I'll be able to pass in that value when calling the bot. And as the final piece of the puzzle involving a human when required, Notice at the end of my bot here, I'm calling or triggering an RE request. And in doing so, I'm able to pass in all of those data elements into that request to reach out to my human user and present the data to them in a form and trigger a workflow. Okay, so now we've put all the pieces together, how might we embed that into a web page? Well, here in our chatbot under integrations, there's a number of standard ways you can integrate with things like Facebook Messenger and other uh, applications like Telegram. The example that I demonstrated in my first video here was using Dialogflow Messenger. And here you can just copy this little bit of code here, embed it into your web page, and then you'll instantly have the little widget down the bottom that you can use to demonstrate the capability. In fact, if I click on Try It Now, it shows how that would look with the current web page, and I would be able to uh, test my chatbot like so. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to cover. The final piece that I'll leave with you, the bonus content if you like, is how to debug these as you're putting everything together. Now, in the first video, I showed how we can use the Try It Now capabilities here to test out our chatbot. And then you can view the JSON that will be generated with the button down the bottom. Coming across to the Cloud Functions, if you go to the Testing tab here, I can paste that JSON here, or indeed any testing content, click on test the function, and that will actually test how this particular piece of the puzzle executes and help you with debugging there. And of course, it's very easy to test your bot logic as you build it. You can just run it as you're progressively putting it together, use the debug function as well. And if you need to test the capabilities of triggering the bot remotely through the APIs via the control room, then you can use something like a Postman tool uh, to send the JSON and test it that way. Okay, that's everything I wanted to cover. Thank you very much everyone for watching and go be great.